Thank you. I love coffee. I love everything about coffee. And everyone just assumes that I know how to make the perfect cup of coffee because I played a character who has the same name as a really big coffee chain. Am I allowed to say that? Could they like sue us? They can't sue us for saying s can they? I don't know. Whatever. I played a character named so everybody thinks that like for some weird reason that I know everything about coffee. I know nothing about coffee except that I love it a lot and drink like borderline too much of it. I'm out to figure out what makes a really good cup of coffee from start to finish. Hey everyone, so we're here at Mount Hood Roasters and this is honestly a dream come true for me <laughs> to learn about the coffee that I'm drinking. And this is Rick who owns the place, started the place, and Hi, I'll let him take it from here because I'm just a kid in a coffee store. My wife and I, uh, Chia and Applegate and myself, we own this place and uh, we've been doing business on Mount Hood since 2002, roasting coffee and distributing to the Portland area. And got a great team. Hi, my name is Chia Applegate. Hi, I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, my name is Shallon. Hi, I'm Leanna. And uh, we're here right in the middle of our brand, Mount Hood. What made you pick Mount Hood? When I retired from the service, we traveled all over the state looking at where we would like to settle down because we decided to do things different. It was going to be venue before everything else. And so we chose Mount Hood because we just thought this was the best place to be. And we had no idea we were going to be a coffee family at the time. No? It was just an accident. That's great. I have so many fond memories of the mountain as a kid as well. When, when we were talking to you and talking about doing this episode, I just assumed that this would be a huge facility. <laughs> and it's a contained it's, sort of it's really operation. It's really, really amazing what we do. In fact, you know, uh, I was sharing that up here, nobody on Mount Hood seems to know what we really do because most of our work isn't up here yeah. and stuff. And so they're they're shocked that we we we're making a living up here as a little tiny coffee shop in Rhode Island. They must think you're a front. You know, they're like, <laughs> well, that's a different story. <laughs> but commercial break. Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Roro. I love my heated Aroro vest. I wear it all the time, and I love my heated gloves also. There are three settings, medium, mild, and hot. I wear this thing all the time on my motorcycle, out for hikes, cold runs, even just on set if it's really cold in the morning. So go check out the link in my bio. You get 10% off if you put the code Katie in. All right, back to coffee. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the storage containers. We're really down on our inventory. We've got a huge load coming up, but this is where wow. we store our coffee. We focus on coffees from predominantly North America. We do have some South American coffees, and we think that local is better, and we think that the closer we buy to home, we know more about how it's shipped, how it's farmed, how it's stored. We place a lot of value in organic. We place a lot of value in fair trade coffee, but less than 10% of organic coffees inspected. Really? I didn't you know, know that. So the roasters are getting inspected, but, but not no. the source. How much in here is waste product after you roast? Uh, we lose about 20% of the chaff that we're going to see later and byproducts that come packaged in it, dust, dirt, you mm -hmm. know, and things. Reese's wrappers. Reese's wrappers. And then we lose a lot of water out of the, the seed has a certain amount oh. of water that leaves. And so we have about 20% shrinkage when we roast. 70% of coffees decaf using a very caustic chemical. Okay. And so when you're shopping for decaf, get like a water process. You'll hear Swiss water process, select water process, or you'll hear just WP water process coffee. It's a natural process mm. that removes the caffeine. It's healthy. Decaf can be just as good as a caffeinated cup. Mm -hmm. It gets a bad rap, but if it's done right, you won't tell the difference. Caffeinated and decaffeinated beans all start the same. Correct. It's just the process of taking the caffeine Correct. out. I, so I, you I, guys don't decaffeinate beans no, here. Uh -uh. You uh -uh. get them no, decaffeinated. We, and we only roast Swiss water processed coffee. And do those come in the green state of the seed? or They're a little bit darker because they use kind of hot water okay. to leach the oil. And the oils are processed so that they take out the caffeine. Is the caffeine in the oil? Yes. The, the seeds themselves are nothing but vessels. They hold the oil. The oil is oh. the gold standard. That's what we want. 
Is that why some seeds look more oily than others? Right, and that, that has to do with the roast. The roast. You know, uh, because as we roast, and you're gonna see this happen, you'll be able to see it visually, the um, color gradation changes. Right. That's kind of this caramelization of sucrose mm -hmm. in the oils. As they become more liquid and dark, they start migrating out. Mm. And so the darker the roast, the oilier the bean you'll see. Yes. The lighter the roast, the more kind of matte finish. Yeah. Or maybe spotted. Yeah, I like a light roast coffee. Yeah, the oilier the bean to me, it's, it always just tastes too strong. You know, the way I describe that is you have a, a bean from Sumatra mm -hmm. and a bean from Costa Rica. Uh -huh. Once they're roasted to where they're palatable, they taste really, really different. If we keep roasting them by themselves, at some point they're gonna become charcoal. And they're gonna yes. taste exactly alike. So that's our flavor pyramid. Okay. So the farther down we are, the more subtle flavors, but since we haven't caramelized the sucrose and it hasn't gotten dark, it's a little bit light on the palate. Okay. Okay. And so a lot of dark drinkers, they like a really heavy cup. They, they want to feel that coffee in their palate. Europeans. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you got to find that place before yeah. it becomes too tea-like, but yeah. you have the flavor variations that you want. Yeah. Or are you a person who needs it? roasted a little bit darker so that it's heavier on the palate when you drink. Interesting. I'm so excited to see the roasting. Okay, so here we are, Katie. This is an old, old roaster. This is the machine we started with. And this is another part of that Oregon story. Yeah. It was invented by Mike Sivitz, who's from Corvallis, Oregon. He started in coffee during World War II, making instant coffee for K rations with general foods. So he invented this, and as a chemical engineer, he wanted to engineer out kind of the, the machine from the coffee cup. So okay. what he said was, if you have a drum roaster, which is the most traditional way to roast, right. it's a closed container. And so you have byproducts, dust, dirt, debris, those types of things that burn up in the chamber and create a secondary smoke. Right. It, so it would go in there. If there were any impurities or sticks or anything, they would burn up and they would make smoke that is not necessarily have anything to do with coffee. It's right. just it's just a byproduct. Yeah. And then the second thing is, that, and when we're roasting, you're gonna see a little bit, as the chaff starts coming off, that can burn and create a secondary smoke as well. Okay. And the, the, the coffee seed at that point, as it's roasting and it's getting darker, is more vulnerable to you know smoke flavors that are not supposed to be there. In an air roaster, we roast in an open protocol. So the beans go in here, the seeds go in here, and then there's a heating chamber and then there's a vacuum blower underneath. What we end up doing is we create the cyclone of coffee rolling around and all the impurities are taken up okay. immediately off of it. They don't burn with the product. Those are getting and sucked up. They're getting sucked up. And then as the chaff is created, it goes up as well. And so we roasted on this machine for 15 years. Wow. It's an, it called an eight pound roaster. We'd start with 10 pounds and finish eight pounds. Well, you can imagine if you're roasting a 1, thousand, 1,500 pounds a week, like how many cycles this takes. <laughs> Kim, you'd never go home. <laughs> oh, she she was rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, long yeah, long, <laughs> long days. We outgrew it, but we just really don't want to take it away because it's part of our DNA as coffee people that, you know, we really celebrate the Civet story. So uh, that's this is where we started. And so after Mike passed away, we had these folks coming in and they're in, into the marketplace and they're building machines that are easier to fix, mm -hmm. that are more durable. 40, 50 years later, uh, there should be some improvements. And so we looked and we found, you can see how big this is for an eight pound roaster. Yeah. And if we go look over here, this is an ash 22 pound roaster. Wow. And so smaller profile, less fire hazard. Yeah, program. we would catch this thing on fire. I was like gonna ask if you'd ever caught three it on or fire. Four. Oh yeah. My son, when he was uh, 16, mm -hmm. um, he was learning how to roast and I had just had a heart attack. I was on like bed rest. And wow he caught this back wall on fire. So I can remember standing out in the parking this lot. This after going the like, heart attack, not yeah, before right. the heart no, attack. No, I'm standing out there in my pajamas, like going like, the doctor said, no stress. There's fire burning up. The fire department's in here with axes chopping the wall out. Uh, Hence the, the handy the fire handy extinguisher fire right extinguisher. here. That, that was a one-off in 20 years. But, yeah. But uh, now with this, it's uh, far safer process, we can mm -hmm. roast more, and it's roasted the same way. Turn it up until they click on, okay. and then it preheats. Usually I preheat it to 200 or so. 200? That's how yeah. hot it needs to be? Yeah, but I'm just Oh my gonna, gosh, it, it does get warm over here. It does. So I'm just going to start it, though. If you're cold, though, it's kind of... 
it's nice for about five minutes. Oh, really? And, well, I'm almost 50, so hot flashes, you know. I stand See? here and I'm perfectly comfortable. Rick, and then you're surrounded by am, women. Yeah, and then I'm so hot, I just I put the cap on it and I walk outside and I stand outside the door and watch the roaster through the window and there's steam coming off of me and I'm just dying. <laughs> 22 pounds of pre- oh, this is what they look like. Pre- Can yes. I yeah, touch yeah. them? Yeah, it's basically just like a dried pea, hard as a rock. Wow. Smells agricultural, not, not like coffee. Yeah, look at that. Huh. You want to get a good smell because part of the roasting process, we're going to see multiple layers. And most, multiple What's the changes. best way to smell it? Just, just like you were, you just take it and yep. that, you know. It sort of smells like the burlap. Can I put one in my mouth? Yeah. You can't bite that. It doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> just, I was going to say. Yeah, it doesn't taste like anything. And then once it starts roasting, it'll be really like. Uh, rye grass. Or yeah. Well, and I was going to say it change. smells like a barn. Yeah. Yeah. And so it'll to... just keep changing and we'll walk you through it. Really? Can so I help you? You can dump it. It starts 22 pounds of bean. Just dump them dump all them in right there. Dump them right in? Yep. All of them? Yep. And then when, when you think they're all in there, pound on the bottom of the bucket. Okay. That right down here. Put on the cap. Turn up the air all the way. All the way up to yep. 100. Yep. And then to get them started, I'm just gonna like flip yeah. the top a little bit. Oh and wow! Then start. Just like popcorn. And that's the vacuum, like the old one. Yes. And this is roasting and we, them right now. Yep. Yeah, we turn on the power so the heat starts back up. Everybody asks the same question: How do you know when they're done? Yeah. Well, the beans talk to you. They, they? Yes, they go What through. do they say, Kim? They, they, they talk just like popcorn, actually. Okay, okay. The, all beans go through two cracks. And okay. the first one is the moisture cooking out of the beans. Okay. Sounds just like popcorn. And the second one is the oils coming out of the beans. Okay. So your medium roasts are in or at the end of your first crack, and your dark roasts are in your second crack. So they don't talk to you like. No, no, and people look at me I'm like dead. really weird. Well, but, but that makes complete sense. So, so do you all the beans that you roast go through both those processes? Yes, at different times, some have more moisture in them. So the first crack is longer. That can vary from bag to bag, even with the same really? origin of bean, because one area might have gotten more moisture that year than the other. Ah. And so they have more moisture in them. I, I really pay attention to the cracks and then what temperature it was when it was in the right place almost every day and get a new temperature. It's usually the same, but. And you have all that memorized? Yeah. You just sort of know? Yeah. I have to physically adjust the air because as they warm up, they get lighter. So you're constantly turning down the air to a certain point. At about 280 or so, 300, your first crack will start. They'll start throwing chaff off at like 220, okay. 210. And I'll how pull long? this off so that the chaff can freely come okay. out. And how long does it take to roast 20 pounds of coffee? 15 to 19 minutes. They should be, they should be warm enough. Okay. See the change? Oh, I can the yeah. Change. Really, uh, what, like grass or hay or rye grass or something? Yeah. Slightly sweet. You can tell, though, it's almost like a bottle of wine, that the, that the more it gets to the right temperature, it opens up. Like, it, it smells does. like it's right. opening up the, right. the smell and the flavor. Right. And you can see, here's the chaff. Oh, that's started. that chaff. Yep, it's just starting. 200, that's what you said. <laughs> You're gonna see here, Katie, the seed's gonna grow between 50 and 70%. Yeah, they look that's really the little. Okay, and, and we're gonna lose 20% of the weight. That's the chaff and then uh, water, the water evaporating out of the sea. Now we're seeing a little bit of color change. See it's tanning up a little bit. Yeah. Smell that. Smell like popcorn. It smells or... like it's like a like a burnt biscuit. Uh-huh. And as the cinnamon color comes on to us, yeah. we're gonna get more. Does anyone drink coffee at this level? This is a little bit too little, but they, they do have what's called white coffee. Yeah. And white coffee is a, an under roasted piece that they, they, they do use in, in certain applications because of its high caffeine content. Oh, you know? so, so are we burning off some of the caffeine well, right now? As we caramelize the sucrose, 
they start turning ground, and then as those oils start migrating out, we we do lose we do lose some of the oils, and that that, that is what we're making coffee out of. Okay. And so um, you know that's why the darker the roast, the less the caffeine. Right, so that's why a blonde roast has the most caffeine that's to most it. Caffeine. So it's been, it, a blonde roast has been roasted less time. Correct. Yeah, you can tell as they start to now change color. Mm. Be careful because there's some smoke coming off of it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. To me, it, it smells, smells like so popcorn. But uh, pretty soon you're going to hear it. It's going to start popping like popcorn. Just heard I the hear first it. One, yeah. You can hear it. Starting to turn. And now it's, it's starting turning. to smell like burnt popcorn to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what a lot of people say, that smoke smells like burnt popcorn or burnt toast. Yeah, and I can see the seeds are getting bigger. You can hear it popping. It sounds like Rice Krispies and milk right now. It will get louder. Yeah? Yeah. So <laughs> you, you can take control. Nope. It's down is this way, up is this way. Yeah. You want to keep the beans about the height they're at now. Okay. So that they're Still moving, but not flying so out. So if you turned it too high, they'd be flying out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It sounds like a fire crackling. Oh, now it's starting it's, to smell like coffee. It's, it's coming with coffee. Is this, if, if we took them off now, could this be a light roast? It would be really, really A really light, light roast. Really, really, really light This is so cool. <laughs> All right, so what have we learned so far? The coffee cracks two times. At one point, kind of smells like popcorn. The first crack is medium roast. The second crack is a dark roast. And the lighter the roast, the more caffeine. And it also can catch on fire. I have no idea why they're letting me do this. Yeah, we're wow. Gonna we're gonna take this one to 443. Okay. It looks like a chocolate fondue. Yes, you're gonna hold this in this yeah. hand and put your other hand right here. Great. And you're just gonna dump kind of quickly. Try not to bang this on that, but and Ooh. like leave it down there until the beans all come out and then stand and it back 443. up. 443. Okay, so you flip this off, move that, go ahead. Oh yep. gosh, yep. oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Go ahead and just drop it on there. There you go. Shake it. Oh, yep, and bring it back on up. Perfect. Wow. And then and you stir that until they're like flat. And then we'll let them sit for a minute. Look at the spots. See the spots of oil on them? Yeah. It's like the oil. Presenting. Yeah. And you leave them just do, do if you try not to touch them? No, they'll, they'll keep stirring them up. They're going to oh. keep it. You know, it's like a cake. You know, you, got, you can't leave it in the oven. Just keeps, yeah. Keeps cooking, so. Look at that oh. oil. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. That is awesome. You do sort of feel like you're baking a cake every yes. time. Yeah. So is this where coffee gets burned then, where everyone says that big chain that will remain nameless has a burnt coffee taste to it? They, they use a drum roaster for one. Okay. It's an extremely large batch drum roaster. Okay. So a lot of that chaff that you see coming out of our coffee gets burnt in there with the Oh. and gives it a burnt bitter aftertaste. In a drum, when the oils start presenting themselves, a drum roaster cooks with hot metal sides. Right. And so they're tumbling in there and those oils are searing, the beans are searing against hot metal plates. Right. Where the civets, we don't cook with this. It gets hot, but we don't cook with that. We cook, cook with superheated air. The oils are in a more natural state. Great. Uh, with an air roaster. Of course, you know, you're gonna have all these drum roasters get online and they're gonna be saying, you know. Of course they will. There is a little bit of this drum versus air roasted thing in the industry. Like the Jets versus the Sharks. Come on, break it up, come on. How many times have I told you once to cut this stuff off? Who knew that coffee people were so hardcore? Okay, Katie, you finished your batch and uh, it's in the cool down phase. It's really important. It's like a cake baking, right? Yeah. You gotta get it out of the oven and you gotta get it cooled down because it will continue to cook. And so here we have it cooled down and this coffee's not ready. I was under the impression that I could take this, go grind it and make myself an espresso. That is not the case. Not the case. Okay. Not the case. 
it's degassing, it's emitting CO2 right now, and it's gonna be in a heavy degassing process for a couple of days. And so uh, we don't grind anything until it's at least eight hours, and we usually let it set for a couple of days and bloom. Is that common? Yeah, it's very common. You can't package fresh coffee in a bag without a degassing valve. What would happen to it? The bag would just expand. Really? Like a bag of chips at altitude? Yeah, that's it, that's <laughs> it. And so when you're looking at coffee and you're evaluating coffee in a store or other places, you wanna find something. If, if you really want something, potentially packaged fresh. You want to find it in a, in a valve bag. I just thought those little holes were so you could smell what the coffee smelled like to see if you liked it. Well, it helps. <laughs> so I, I put my nose up to all of them in the grocery store so, and I just squeeze the bag and go, nope, don't like that one. Yep, that's called a degassing valve. It's a one-way valve. So it allows, as the CO2 uh, presents in there, it allows the CO2 and the aromas to uh, leave the coffee. Huh. But no oxygen in. So it, it can't go back in. Right. Coffee that. Oxygen, sunlight, heat, these are the things that damage your coffee. Where's the best place to keep your coffee? That's a big fight right I know. There, you know. And there are a lot of like hipsters in Portland that are like, never put your coffee in the refrigerator. The All the hipsters tell you that. Okay. <laughs> hipsters and millennials, jeez. <laughs> jeez. Mike Sivitz, uh, he wrote an awful lot and he devoted his entire life to coffee. And he was a strong proponent of storing your coffee in the freezer. That's so, where I store my coffee. Uh, you know, without, really tying ourselves into this bigger Portland debate. <laughs> we just kind of defer to Mike's wisdom. Okay. That, and we, and we re recommend yeah. that as well. Well, that's where I store my coffee, so I feel like I'm winning. When you this were is... taking the beans out to my eye, I could see that they were slightly different, but I didn't think they were this different. Right. Seeing them is... Here, is... here is where we were at green. And then uh, as it started getting a little bit cinnamony, we were kind of in between mm -hmm. that burnt biscuit yes. and uh, rye grass yes. kind of thing. And then this is when we first started smelling coffee. Yes. And you can see the color gradation. We've, we're actually caramelizing the sucrose in the coffee oils at this point and stuff. So that we're actually doing something here. Mm. Here we're heating them up. And if you notice when you smell this, you didn't have as much of that steam coming up as right. when we moved into these dark. Yeah, because these were definitely hotter for yeah. sure. Yeah. Could we have stopped roasting here? Yeah, we could have. That would be a real blonde. Uh, like a really, so more roast. caffeine in this than this? Right, and you, and you can see we're missing kind of a step in here, which is what we are medium roast, we mm -hmm. stop at. But here we have all of the oils basically inside the inside the vessel, the seed. And then where we saw there, where it's spotting. Yeah. That's kind of our medium roast profile. We're looking for a matte finish with spots of oil. And then as we go into the darker roast, we get this oily sheen. You can roast darker than, I've seen oh, yeah. darker. Okay, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, so Wait, you can get really. This is like a French roast or okay. something where we take it really, really dark. Makes me so happy. You were saying earlier how people think that uh, like it's ready. You yeah. Know, it's like we just roast it. Shove it in a grinder. But there's a lot of differences. Looking at it, you can't tell really. But if you come over here and get a good smell. It doesn't really smell. It doesn't have a real strong. No, no, I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't it? no, not at all. Now in coffee, we call this the fragrance. Once it's brewed, we talk about aroma. Yes. And then the fragrance, like in the, in the green form or in its pre-brewed form. Oh. And so that when you hear somebody talk about the fragrance of coffee, it's earlier. It's before, in this stage. Right? And so this looks like it's ready to go. Uh, you know, a lot of folks, the first time they see it, they're like, oh, wow, this smells so good. Yeah. But it doesn't. Mm -mm. It's, it's really nondescript. It doesn't but really smell like anything. This is one that's fully bloomed. It was roasted two days ago. Fully bloomed. Two days, two, just two days. Oh, it smells like coffee. Isn't that something? Oh my it's gosh, delicious. it smells like a beautiful coffee. It's just delicious. And this is a medium roast. This is a medium roast. Does coffee age like wine? No, it, it has a specific window, you know, and some people like it really quick after it's degassed. I prefer coffee that's bloomed for 
three, four, five, even as much as a week or so. Okay. Seven to nine days mm. in there. I really like coffee in that in that zone. So you say that it's bloomed for seven to nine days. Well, you want to drink it within seven to nine days, no, like grind I, it, or I, you want to package I it? I want to wait until it's you know five, six, seven days old okay. before I grind and drink it myself. Okay. Instead, okay. Most palates can't tell, won't be able to mm. tell the difference. But you know, coffee, unlike wine, wine, wine is you know the longer right. it goes, it, it changes. Hopefully for the better. Right. You know, coffee. You don't want to drink five-year-old coffee. So when we go to Costco and we buy the big things of beans how long in your opinion typically would that coffee have been roasted bagged sitting on the shelf at it's costco really hard to say it could be it could be could be weeks yeah could be months yeah you know because when you think about the large distribution you know it goes right. to distribution centers and the distribution centers send it to a, a store it's yeah. in back stock until it gets worked into the yeah. into the counter and it sits there and who knows how it's being rotated whether they're rotating the product it could yeah. be really oh, really old that. product all right maybe if i actually bought a higher quality bean i wouldn't have to drink eight cups to get my caffeine in the morning there they do uh, you might just need I that. intravenously put it in. I mean, if there I could go. buy that oil out <laughs> right. of the bean, right. I would right. there you go. ingest that in the morning. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Come back next week where you actually get to see if I choked or if I actually learned how to make the perfect cup of coffee. I got this.